welcome to the next video in my MSI 2022 preview. We're covering Group B and my predictions. Sorry to the Red Cannon fans. I have them going 2-4. and four. I gave more thought to this, and I feel like 2-4 and four is probably what's going to happen. If you haven't watched one of my videos before, I've covered all 11 teams, giving a preview of each one, going over their international experience um, at MSI or Worlds. I've also ranked the roles, so those videos are on my channel as well, going over the most played champions by each player in their given role, just to kind of look and see at what might what metas might form. Um, I had somebody, a couple people ask me questions about the meta, and um, I mean last night, and I did do two videos on that uh, um, in regards to patch 12.8 and 12.9, no, why did I say 12.8 and 12.9, 12.7 and 12.8, um, I think I might have mentioned 12.9 in those comments, so I apologize to throw you off, but I did a video about 12.8 and 12.7 to give you a vibe on what players have played in the past and what maybe they played this year that is part are part of the champions on those patches that could enter the meta, um, but you are here for Group B, so let's go over this. RNG, I have going 5-1 and one and not 6-0. and oh. I have an, a feeling that RNG are not like T1. Um, it's not even like a feeling. I mean, I watch a ton of their games. RNG sometimes can throw, um, especially Ben. Ben is the player to watch. I, I'm very high on Ben. I believe Ben is the best top laner in the world. And when he is on, RNG could be the best team in the world. I think if they are on against T1, we have a five-game series on our hands. Um, but I think the scouting report against RNG is if you go top lane and get Ben behind, the team falls apart. And we've seen that a few times this past spring in the LPL. And if you don't watch the LPL, then you have no idea what I'm talking about. But um, it's happened quite a few times. The Rare Adam series, I mention it time and time again. I feel like that is a playbook on how to play against RNG and succeed. Um, but other people haven't done it. Now, why do I think that in this group that's going to happen? I believe PSG has enough veteran leadership in Hanabi and Kaiwing and unified for that matter, even though he's not, um, you know, part of PSG talent that did so well last year and the year before. Um, I believe that they can beat RNG and go one and one. Um, I believe RNG might kind of take their foot off the gas, similar to the Rare Adam series, and lose as a result. Hanabi is clearly the best player for PSG. So the top lane is going to be a big part, of, in my opinion, of what determines this group. Um, PSG definitely have a great one in Hanabi, Nar and Gangplank. I went over them yesterday as pocket picks. People will say, oh, well, everyone plays Nar and Gangplank. And Bin can play Gangplank, so maybe Gangplank becomes very contested between the two um, players. Um, this, this uh, you know, group stage. But I think that when push comes to shove, PSG have a chance to take a game off of RNG. Um this leads into Red Cannons, which is why a lot of people are going to be watching this video. I have a lot of Brazilian fans out there. I finally figured out how to do Portuguese subtitles, so those will be on this video. Well, obviously, you already, hopefully, started using them. Um, I have them finishing third, two and four. There's no tiebreaker. I believe that um, Red Cannons or Istanbul have a chance to take a game off of PSG. I think that that's feasible. Um, but I believe red cannons are, are going to have problems when it comes to, um, top lane. And we know this, we know that Gigo struggles and that's why that he was getting subbed out at times this past split. And you don't have your sub because of these issues. I'm sorry, but he, he, it's all on Aegis. Aegis ends up being the player to watch because Aegis has to make sure Gigo does not get demolished. And also there could be a coach gap. If the coach drafts Gigo, Malphite, Scion, Gragas, champions like that, Orn, they have a chance. You have to lose that lane with Grace. You cannot get blown out by Ben or Hanabi and expect to win the game. That's just not going to happen. I really don't think it's going to happen if they let that occur. They cannot let Gigo be gapped. And also, um, I feel like mid lane is kind of weak when it comes to PSG, Red, and Istanbul Wildcats. We know Graftar is pretty weak, um, losing lane all the time. He needs to um, do well against what I believe to be 
uh, mid laners towards his level in Bay and um, well, actually, Saren's pretty damn good. We'll get to that in a minute. But um, he has to show up if they want a chance in hell, as well as Aegis, making sure those two solo lanes do well. We know the bot lane is solid, but the problem is I believe that this group is not where Titan and JoJo can really um, succeed um, against Gala and Ming. I think Ming is going to have... Um, everything under control down there and Kai Wing as well is going to have everything under control. I don't believe that the red bot lane is going to be able to make a big difference in this series. Um, it's all going to come down to Aegis and making sure Gigo doesn't get behind. I hear that. I re remember when I did the red cannon video at first, everyone said they were a team that played for late game. And honestly, that might have to be what they do. And I, I said at the time, I don't think that that's the good, best strategy but um, I think now, after really thinking about this group over the last few, I mean, day or so, um, this is this is what's got to happen. They have to play a late game scaling tank in top lane and, and play for late because I don't, um, I, I Gigo is a problem. And we know Gigo is a problem. We know the solo lanes are an issue. Um, and, you know, they're all friends and everyone's like, oh, well, they're all friends. And they've been together for a long time and. You know, the camaraderie, and yeah, that works for for your fans and things like that, but when you get to a group stage like this, somebody, th this is not, this could not be good enough, and you have to accept, hey, if we want to ever do anything at the international stage, we need to get better some way, somehow, whether that's, you know, not just subbing players, but outright saying, hey, you're going to be the backup now, so, um, Istanbul Wildcats, I have fourth. I think Saren is the player to watch. Saren was my top-ranked mid laner um, in the smaller regions, at least according to my stats. His stats are great. Um, I think there is room for him to take advantage of Grevthar. Like I said, Grevthar has to show up. If he doesn't, Saren. I I could see these teams swapping, and I mean, we don't want Red Cannons to be 1-5, and five, but if Grevthar does not show up, Saren is the type of player that could take advantage of him. Um, that's their best player, Holy Phoenix. I think Holy Phoenix can keep Titan under wraps. They're both veterans. Holy Phoenix has been around for a long time. Um, I think that, you know, he's okay. Top lane, they're screwed. I think Starscreen is the worst top laner in this tournament. Um, people don't really like that I say that, but when I see him play, when I've seen him play, um, and it was a year ago, so he could have gotten better, he struggled. So, I think they can take a game off of Red or PSG, um, but I don't think that um, they're going to take multiple games. I, I just don't. I don't think this team is that good. Um, I mean, it is what it is. If Saren goes off, maybe, but I don't. I mean, going against PSG, I think it's the same thing as what Red has to deal with. Um, Red has to, you know, make sure that top lane stays under control. And uh, loses with grace for the late game where they can become relevant. Because um, RNG and PSG top side are really, really good. And that is the weakness of Red and Istanbul. So comment down below if you have an opinion of your own on this group. How do you think it's going to turn out? Obviously, I'm going to have a lot of Red Cannon fans in the comments. Um, sorry to disappoint you, but I feel like I gave a good analysis of why I think that they're going to be on Struggle Street. Um, you know. Comment down below with your opinions. Like the video if you like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily league content. Tomorrow I'm going to have Group C. Monday I should have um, news and notes and predictions of how I think MSI is going to turn out in general. I have to kind of see how these days are going to play out before um, we get to day one where I will be doing my League of Legends roundups once more. So thank you for watching this video and I hope you come back for more content.